Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It is the latest of our video calls. We've been chatting to everybody while we're all stuck at home at the minute, and I'm delighted to say we've got nothing nowhere on the line. How are you, man? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Not bad, not bad, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. And we will start this off in the same way we've started all of them off to say, you know, I hope you, your loved ones, you're all keeping safe, keeping well throughout the madness of the last 12 months or so. And, uh, you know, before we get into music just yet, how has this extended time at home been for you, man? I imagine this might have been a period where you would have been maybe doing some shows around the record and stuff. How's it been having this extra time at home? Yeah, I mean, it's very bizarre and weird. Um, you know, before COVID hit, we had a world tour booked, which is probably the worst year of, of all time to have a world tour. So that that was funny. Um, you know, it's weird not touring off the new record, but um, I'm looking at the positives. Honestly, you know, it's more time um, to kind of cultivate my my own hobbies and, you know, find, you know, my practice mindfulness and just be here and you know, there's definitely a silver lining to it all, I feel like. Yeah, it's one of those things as well. Like, uh, it's been a recurring theme in many of these conversations, but because you got the record out there now, by the time you do tour, it's going to be kind of cool that everyone will know it in a much bigger way than they perhaps would have when you were touring yeah. at the time you went to. Yeah, because, I mean, now you're like, you. there's no, like, connection to the fans in that visceral live way where you're like, people know, I wonder if people know the lyrics, like, it becomes real when you're playing a show and, and people are screaming the lyrics back at you. So it'll be, I, I can't wait. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a really exciting time for you, man. But you say, you know, one of the reasons we're chatting right now back on the cover of rock sound, which we're always really excited about, man, and all in celebration of this huge, huge record trauma factory. Let's start with the fans again. They've been such an incredible supportive community for you. We've seen it grow and grow over the last couple of years. Uh, the reactions to this record when it came out were really overwhelmingly positive, I thought, and just really, really nice to see. You must have noticed that as well, right? Yeah. Um, it's always nerve wracking when you spend so much time on a body of work. I mean, this is the longest I've ever spent on a, on a record. We spent two years on it. And, um, you know, it's really um, nerve wracking and scary and you're really unsure uh, but the response has been amazing and people have been nothing but supportive. Um, and I just couldn't be happier that, you know, people are connecting with the music and hearing a lot of positive things that it's helping them. And it's just, it's been really great. How was it actually, I guess, in that build up to finally drop in the record? Because it's like you say, it's been something you've been building to for a long time. It's been a minute since that last full length. And, you know, you've done little bits in between, but it does feel like, the the end of a long period of work for you is there extra nerves to that you know it must have been almost a bit of a relief to finally have it out there for the world to see yeah it's a it's a mix of a lot of things like almost it's like almost like a postpartum depression kind of thing sure. where it's like you know you, you you spend so much time kind of quote-unquote birthing this this thing and then it's there and you're you're like okay what now um it, but i mean the process is the same it was just you know two years of creating and just you know making art and and uh doing what i do and you know i i, I took some time away and and since my last full length lp ruiner I, I stepped back and really worked on myself and um you know i i think uh things kind of picked up really fast for me after i dropped hammer and i had to step away a little bit reassess and and now we're here with trauma factory and I think it's all perfect timing and it's, and it's aligning in, in the right way for me and in, in a healthy way, I feel like. That's really nice to hear, man, because it's, it's what's been really, really reassuring and really lovely to see is, you know, you, again, the fans were just so supportive of you and you did feel the need to take some time away as everyone often does. And now that you are back, it seems like it's, it's getting bigger than ever. Like you say, like, you know, that reaction to hammer was one thing. The reaction to fake friend is a whole nother thing, man. It's absolutely amazing to see how well that's taken off in the U S uh, Talk to me a little bit, I guess, about putting that song together, but also that that connection. It really feels like it's connected with a grander audience than ever before, that song in particular. Yeah, yeah, that that's very true. Um, you know, I guess the process of making it was, you know, super collaborative, a bunch of friends just trying to make a really catchy kind of 90s alt-rock song. And um, we finished it up in my treehouse, which is over behind me. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of the reach, I mean, it's played, it's played on the radio uh, in the states here, like FM radio, which is 
a whole new thing for me. Like you could walk into the store and hear it. Or, you know, I, people send me videos all the time. They're like, Hey, I'm in this random place and they're playing your song. And it's so uh, different than anything I've ever experienced. And um, it's just really cool because I guess when you think of radio or you think of like kind of breaching into avenues like that, like mainstream avenues, you think that you have to sacrifice your kind of integrity as an artist, but really all I did was kind of just do me. And now the fact that all these radio stations are, are playing it across the country is like really relieving in a way, because it, it kind of like was like, Oh, like I can just be me and like reach that next level of like notoriety and just be authentic, you know? Yeah. It's gotta be such a gratifying moment for you. I'm sure. And it's funny seeing you mentioned about like, uh, you know, walking into a store and here it just, it, that's gotta be such surreal moments in a way those little touchstones happen. And particularly, I mean, the one you pointed out online, the Elton John moment, dude, that's such a crazy, crazy thing. That's gotta have been such a lovely moment though to look back on. I, yeah, I cannot get over the Elton John shout out. Uh, he, he played my music on his uh, rocket hour show and, um just hearing him say nothing nowhere and 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 uh he, he was talking about how i was off the new record trauma factory i was like just one of those maybe the biggest pinch me moments where i was like this is insane uh it, it just kind of like floored me to be honest yeah i can only imagine dude such a very very cool man it was nice watching your reaction on that video you put out as well because yeah it's just so relatable that's that's how any artist would react if elton knows who you are man it's so cool dude sir elton john like insane yeah absolutely awesome man absolutely awesome uh just generally you know like we say it has been a minute since runa came out and they always end up asking you know as i think we said and spoke about this a little bit last time i spoke with you about you know what the learnings are from those releases and uh it just, it makes me wonder how it feeds into this next record, really. You know, what were the steps when you'd wrapped up that Ruina era? And I know there were things that came in between, but did you have a set of aims on how you wanted to build this forward, on how you wanted it to grow for your next full-length release like this? Yeah, well, um, I think uh, by nature, I make experimental music. I like being experimental in the process. I listen to every single genre. Um, and I wanted to make something that no one else has, has really been doing. And that is sort of a, a record that encompasses all of my influences, but in a very direct way. Like, you know, we have song, like new metal song, like heavy song, like death on the record. We have an R and B song like lights. Um, you know, kind of an alternative rock song like Fake Friend and even Exile, uh, that track being, you know, just straight up rap, kind of trap vibes. I wanted to do something that was like, hey, like, it's not a traditional body of work. It's a little piece of me and every little portion of my life and these phases that I've gone through growing up, put it put into this one box and wrapped up, put a bow on it. And that's Trauma Factory. And, um, I, I really wanted to just show people that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm down to make whatever type of music and hopefully it inspires other musicians to be like, you know, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to experiment a little bit more and kind of break through the, the genre barrier that they put themselves in. It's been a really lovely thing. It gets mentioned a lot, this idea of the genre barrier, as you put it there. You know, it, it, it's blurred so much more in the last few years. I feel like you were almost ahead of the curve on that because you can see now even looking at your most mainstream, most popular of artists, and they are blurring those lines, particularly when it comes to the alternative world. It's got to be a lovely thing to see that, particularly among, you know, your collaborators are certainly at the forefront of it as well. Yeah, no, totally. Um, I mean, it's... It's really great because that gives the artist uh, like artistic freedom. And, and I think music fans and, and listeners are less judgmental and they, they don't expect you to do the same track, you know, 20 times over in your career. And that's how people get burnt out. That's how people quit music is when people expect one thing out of you and they expect the same thing over and over. Um, or, you know, on, on the flip side of that, you know, they, they, you, they think you're doing the same thing and saying you're never growing. It's like, I think we're in a great spot right now where um, 
it's kind of the wild west and you just make music and do what you want. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, Spotify and people ingesting music in different ways. Like it's just, there's so much music. So like, why do the same, why create the same kind all the time, you know? Yeah. Fair point. Yeah. When there's that much choice out there, why not try a million different things, man? It makes a lot of sense. Uh, Mm -hmm. Speaking of trying new things, I want to mention the one take series because it's, it's such an impressive operation, man. And uh, and particularly during the lockdown months, you know, seeing you be able to put together something like that. It's, it's genuinely very impressive when everyone's trying to figure out ways to stay creative, particularly at home. Just tell me a little bit about, I guess the approach to doing that, what are the challenges of putting something like that together and, and I guess where it all kind of came from? Yeah. I mean, I, I think honestly it stemmed out of boredom uh, and just kind of like, you know, Hey, like when I'm not working on a record, what else am I going to do with my time? And, and I want to kind of like, you know, give people something to chew on while I'm working on a, on a full length album. When I was working on trauma factory. and I was really inspired by kind of the MTV unplugged stuff growing up and particularly like, uh, you know, the dashboard confessional one. And I just think it's, it was really rad. And, and, and I wanted to, just give something back to my supporters that they could listen to and enjoy. And um, it's been fun. I mean, it's difficult, you know, being a one man show kind of setting, setting up the camera, getting the focus, walking back over, like in my frame, walking back and, you know, um, but I've kind of been used to doing that, that DIY thing for a minute and, and it keeps me busy, honestly, and it keeps me creative. So I'm just stoked that people like it, you know? Do you see, you see it being something that you might continue working on more and more in the future, you know, even when you got these gaps? Yeah. Um, I've actually started recently diving back into them and, uh, we, uh, are working on a lot of them right now. So, uh, I'm stoked to show people. Very cool. I know you won't want to, won't want to give too much away, but have you got any covers that you've particularly picked out this time or anything like that? Uh, I do have one cover for sure. Um, We'll say maybe it's a lot like the MTV Unplugged stuff. Um, But uh, yeah, I'm excited to show people. Very exciting, man. No, it's a great project to have ongoing. And, 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 you know, like I say, you've kept busy through these last 12 months besides the album, obviously. You know, you've had a fair few collaborations come out as well. I want to mention the Scary Pool Party one in particular. You know, just how did that particular collaboration come to be? Yeah, so Alejandro um, goes by Scary Pool Party. I, I... I had watched him when he was on American American Idol, um, and I was a uh, a huge, massive fan of his for a while. And I remember seeing his audition and just being like, "I would probably be friends with this guy. Like this 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 dude seems super chill." And uh, you know, fast forward like a year or two, uh, we just kind of reached out. I think I don't remember who reached out to who, but I was, it was kind of like, "Hey, I'm a fan of your music," and then, "Hey, I'm also a fan of your music," and. Uh, we just kind of became buddies and uh, you know, he is probably the most talented musician I think I've ever collaborated with or ever seen um, just in terms of his piano playing, his guitar playing, his lyricism. It's, it is like genius levels and uh, he's just the nicest dude. And, and uh, we decided to make some stuff and hopefully we, we continue and, and make some more stuff for sure. Yeah, that's what I've always liked about your work with other people. It's like when you did the EP with Travis, you know, it's not just like one track and you can do several things like that and or have guests appear on albums here and there. It's got to be a nice way to just uh, match match the collab to the project in a way. You know, it doesn't just have to be a one-off guest appearance. You can do what you want, right? Yeah, I mean, that's variety is the spice of life. You know, you got, got to keep busy and, and mix it up for sure. Absolutely, man. Uh, we mentioned, you know, how cool it will be when these songs finally get in front of the crowd. You know, we're hoping it's going to be sooner rather than later. I would imagine someone like yourself, who's meticulous in terms of your visuals and in terms of how you want to present the songs, you must have been thinking about how that live show will look when it happens, right? Tell me a little bit about about those live plans of yours. Yeah, um, I take my live performances really seriously. Um, You know, I I grew up in a scene where you kind of have to pay your dues and you have to be uh, really great live. Um, And it's kind of the mark of a well-rounded musician or artist. And um, I yeah, I I definitely think visually. And and I when I was making the songs, I was just thinking, you know, how is this going to translate live? Um, And and what can we do to really like bring a whole different experience to um, a, a live setting? 
Um, and needless to say, you know, it's, it's an everyday process. Um, even now, like already working on adding different interludes and breakdowns and, and live band, um, just pieces into the set. And that's the, that's so much fun to me. It's very stressful, but at the same time, it's so fun. And, you know, we have a new drummer now, uh, Xavier, who's unbelievable, uh, scary good at drums and um we're just super excited to to play trauma factory in its entirety at some point and people can't wait to hear it dude it's going to be such an exciting time when these live shows come back and i guess looking a little to the future you know it seems ridiculous to almost talk about new music when this record has only just dropped and people are kind of getting used to it but i know you had quite a lot of songs to choose from for this record so it does better the question do you think are any of those going to get revisited at some point? Do you feel like you're going to be, oh, okay, you're nodding. You feel like there's going to be more yeah. new music from those sessions at some point. Yeah, yeah there will certainly be some B-sides. Um, so, you know, people should definitely keep their eyes peeled. Uh, I have a lot of songs and many B-sides that didn't make Trauma Factory. So I think those will certainly uh, be released at some point. And how do you feel about more new music? I mean, apart from the one take series, you're already thinking about what's going to come next? Yeah, I'm already chomping at the bit, ready to go. You know, uh, uh, I, I would love to do an acoustic EP. I would love to drop a mixtape. Um, yeah, I, I'm just ready to go again, you know, because uh, I'm always evolving and changing as a musician and I want to showcase where I'm at right now, you know. Dude, it's always so good to chat to you, man. Congratulations on the record. Seriously, really, really strong. And it's great to have you back on the cover of Rock Sound. Go read the article if you haven't already, guys. It's it's really fascinating story behind this record. And in the meantime, man, just stay safe out there. We look forward to seeing you in the UK when that is allowed. We hope it's sooner rather than later. But uh, take care of yourself in the meantime, all right? Yeah, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, have an awesome day. Yeah, good to chat to you, man. All right, nothing, no worries.